Just keep aside all the stress, tension, and negativity from your daily life. Just relax and enjoy these eight minutes of visually stunning, mind-soothing math. One, let this be a square of side length A. Now draw a rectangle of side lengths A and B and join it with this square like this. Now duplicate this rectangle, then rotate it to make it horizontal and join it with this square like this. Now the length of this piece is B and this is also of length B. So this is a square of side length B. Now the area of this square will be A square. Then the area of both these rectangles will be A times B, right? And the area of this square will be B square. Add them together. We get A square plus AB plus AB, or two times AB plus B square. Now look at this entire square. This is A and this is B. So this square has side length A plus B, and thus its area will be A plus B whole square. Wow! This is the secret behind the A plus B whole square formula. 2. What is the value of the summation of 1 over 2 raised to the power of n from n equals 1 to infinity? You might have seen this sum while learning geometric progressions. It's just 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 16, and so on forever. And shockingly, it all adds up to exactly 1. But how? Take a square of side length 1. Its area will be equal to 1, right? Now divide this square in half. So both these rectangles will have an area of half, right? Next, take one of those halves and divide it again into half. Now you have two rectangles, each having area 1 fourth. Keep going like that. Take one of this 1 fourth and divide it into half to get 1 eighth. Then again, divide that 1 eighth into half to get 1 sixteenth. Keep doing this forever, each time taking half of the remaining part. Surprisingly, if you add up all those tiny pieces, 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth and so on till infinity, you'll perfectly fill the original square of area 1. 3. To solve an equation like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, the first thing we do is divide every term by a, so that the x squared term has a coefficient of one. Now we are left with x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a equals zero. Now let's focus only on the first two terms or these. Imagine drawing a square of side length x such that its area is this x square. And next to it, we place a rectangle whose one side is x and the other side is b over a, like this, so that its area is b over a times x, or this. We now cut this rectangle into two equal parts like this, so that each smaller rectangle has sides x and b over 2a. We then take one of these and rotate it around like this to place it beside the original square, forming almost a larger square. The side of this nearly big square is now x plus b over 2a, isn't it? But to actually make it a complete square, we still need to add one small corner square, which has a side length of b over 2a, and thus its area will be b over 2a whole square. So this part of the equation now becomes x plus b over 2a whole square, which is the area of this new big square. And we subtract that extra little square area, b over 2a the whole square. And don't forget the plus c over a from earlier. All of this equals zero. Now move the constant terms to the right side to isolate the perfect square. So the left becomes x plus b over 2a the whole square, and the right side becomes b over 2a whole square minus c over a. Now we take the square root of both sides. This square will get canceled with this square root, and on the left we have x plus b over 2a. And don't forget to include the plus or minus on the right. Then we subtract b over 2a from both sides. 
multiply and divide by 4a here to get 4ac over 4a square. And this is simply b square over 4a square. Square root of 4a square is 2 times a, and thus, finally, this thing becomes minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac over 2a. And folks, that is our beloved quadratic formula. Wow, my mind is literally blown away right now. 4. Draw a square of side length n such that its area is n square. Now divide it into smaller uniform grids like this, such that each small square has side length 1. So the entire big square contains n rows and n columns. Total n square small squares. Now start from the bottom left corner and look at this smaller square. It has an area of one square unit. Now look at this two by two square grids. It has an area of four units, right? But remove this one unit from it because we have already considered that. So this remaining second layer has three square units area. Next look at this three by three square grids. It has an area of nine units, right? But remove this two by two square grids or four square units from it because we have already considered that. So this remaining third layer has mine minus four or five square units area. Similarly, for this fourth layer, we will be left with 16 minus nine or seven square units area. Keep doing this until we completely fill the big square and the last layer has 2n minus 1 square unit area. So by the time we reach the outermost layer, we've added the first n odd numbers, starting from 1 and ending at 2n minus 1. And what do we get? The entire square of area n square. That means the sum of the first n odd numbers is exactly equal to n square. Wow, that gave me goosebumps. Five. Imagine a point moving around the edge of a circle with radius r. This point starts at the far right of the circle, and we slowly rotate it in a counterclockwise direction, starting from angle theta equals zero and going all the way to 360 degrees. Now, watch closely what happens. As the point moves, its horizontal position from the center is given by r cos theta, and its vertical position is given by r sine theta. So even though the point is moving in a circle, its shadow on the x-axis goes back and forth, tracing out a cosine wave, and the shadow on the y-axis goes up and down, tracing out a sine wave. Now, from this simple animation, think about these questions carefully, and tell me your answer in the comments. By the way, I will not take credit for these visuals. Although they are animated by me, some of the ideas were taken from this math stack exchange question. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!